buddy. This is Scrubs, and when the show's at its best, well, it's but one of the best on television. At least it was at the time, and Scrubs brings its A-game well, a good amount of that time. There have been some seriously great episodes over the years, but today I want to focus on just a single episode that sets itself apart as being well, the best of the bunch, mostly to point out what Scrubs gets right when it's getting things right. That episode? My screw up. Season 3, episode 14 sets a pretty high bar for what can be accomplished in a 22 minute single camera comedy. So what makes a perfect Scrubs episode? This episode is an exploration of so many different emotional themes, guilt, grief, love, compassion, regret, forgiveness, acceptance, all explored in their own unique ways throughout the episode of well, Scrubs, which is, you know, a sitcom. The structure of the episode is supported by the strong foundation it builds before we even get to the opening credits. Immediately we're brought into our three main characters doing what they do best banter and support one another. This is a critical component to what makes a great Scrubs episode. These characters are our friends, or at least that's how they're presented, and sometimes it's fun just hanging out with them. It's slice of life in the middle of narrative. The next scene sets up a bit of a low stakes relationship drama between Turk and Carla, which touches on some potential insecurity surrounding Carla and taking Turk's last name after they get married. We'll just have one of those modern marriages where the husband and wife don't love each other. <sighs> Turk? The scene is only 15 seconds long, yet these three lines of dialogue set the tone for the journey these two characters are about to embark on. Wait, Turk! Turk, whoa! Again, love, insecurity, compassion, concern, and fear all delivered in just, well, three quick lines of dialogue. It's good writing. You okay? All good. The third scene of the show's opening sequence introduces the linchpin of the entire episode, Dr. Cox. He enters the scene planning his son's birthday and sarcastically insinuates that he and his wife should give the parents a loaded gun to play Russian roulette with. And here's the kicker. We put bullets in all the chambers, that way everybody wins. Ooh. This joke, if you want to call it that, really paints the character of Dr. Cox in an almost cold and insensitive light, something that will be challenged later on. This scene also introduces another key element to the episode, which is Jack's first birthday party. Will there be a pinata? Because I need to know if I should bring my pinata helmet. Ha ba ba! Would you sip it, nerd? The final moment of the opening sequence reintroduces us to Dr. Cox's brother-in-law and best friend Ben as the catalyst for the rest of the events that will inevitably unfold in the episode. He snaps a photo of JD, and I want you to remember this camera because it's actually a key piece of storytelling. Point here is that Scrubs always does an excellent job when it's getting things right of setting up its narrative. And setting it up in a way where each episode can be isolated, even in serialization, what you want to do is make sure that anybody can hop in anywhere and have a good time, especially with a sitcom and Scrubs is one of the best at doing that very thing. And it's the foundation of what they build here that expertly sets the stage for the rest of the episode to play out. All the ingredients are in the plot, and now it's time for the show to start cooking. In the next scene, we get a little extra piece of hidden foreshadowing by way of Ben's character. Ben tells Dr. Cox that he will be carrying his camera with him until the day I die. So, you still doing the whole kooky guy who brings his camera everywhere thing? Till the day I die. Uh -huh. Effectively foreshadowing the fate of Ben. Now we start to expand on the show's B-plot, which is equally as rich as the primary storyline. In this scene, Elliot's foot problem serves as the catalyst and Carla confessing to Turk that she hates his mole. I hate your mole. What? What? Not only does this make us laugh, it also puts the characters of Turk and Carla in extremely vulnerable places. Turk is in more of an insecure shock place and Carla is in more of a guilty place. This scene kicks off our theme of guilt which will run throughout the episode. In this sequence there's a little more foreshadowing as someone literally screams he's going to die right before cutting over to Ben and Dr. Cox here. Oh my god, he's gonna die! No, 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 Perfect timing. Anyway, this scene is incredibly important because it effectively sets up Dr. Cox's and JD's inevitable battles with their own guilt later on. Dr. Cox has to leave the hospital to go bail a party clown out of jail and leaves Ben in JD's care to run some blood tests. We also get the detail here that the patient JD is wheeling around, Mr. Taylor, is dealing with cardiac issues, which again is another piece of brilliant misdirection from the writers. Now we return to the subplot and get to the point a little bit. Scrubs does an excellent job of balancing A and B line plots all the way throughout its series. A lot of shows will give you nice A-line plots and let you have fun with those, and then just shove in B-line plots simply to pad an episode, reach a 23 minute runtime, but that's not what Scrubs does here. The subplot gets a little more insight into Turk and Carla's battle with his lip mole. Elliot and JD prey on Turk's insecurity, and quickly after that, JD gets an extremely urgent and intentionally mysterious page. Uh, that's a code. Ted is experiencing some guilt as his band will not be able to play Dr. Cox's kid's birthday party. Now, even though I never asked you to, that is still just terrific news. We're now smack dab in the middle of the episode, and this is actually the most pivotal moment. 
JD enters and tells Dr. Cox, 20 minutes after you left, he went into cardiac arrest. We tried to resuscitate him, but there was nothing we could do. Since we see Ben enter the frame in the background, we assume that JD is talking about Mr. Taylor. Uh, There's just one thing missing. Ben is no longer wearing his camera. Now JD is overwhelmed by guilt as well. He can't even look at Dr. Cox in the eyes. What comes off to us as a satellite character dying is actually an emotional atomic bomb in disguise. Turk tries to bargain his way out of getting his mole removed to no avail. It's also worth noting that bargaining is another stage of grief, which is the primary theme explored in the episode. Step three to a great Scrubs episode is understanding your thematic tone and balancing it properly with comedy, but more pertinently, dry driving the emotion of each episode home, something that a lot of sitcoms get wrong or don't even attempt to do. So now things are getting really heated between Dr. Cox and JD, we are now exploring what happens when extreme anger meets extreme guilt. So wait, you think this was my fault? Hey, this is an emotional situation, so why don't you just go easy on the kid? It was your fault. Now get the hell out. We never really question why Ben is standing around, hovering over Dr. Cox's shoulders, and we should, shouldn't we? Should we be paying attention to how awkward it is having a non-medical professional following a doctor around and giving him advice? It's now revealed that Dr. Cox has been sleeping at the hospital for two straight days, and he is still lacing into JD. JD reminds him of an event. Look, you want to be mad at me, that's fine. I get it, okay? But Jordan called, she wants to make sure you show this afternoon. Which we assume is Jack's first birthday party, and all the while we never question Ben's presence. It's two days later and Ben is wearing the exact same outfit, but the episode is so well written that we don't even notice. Turk and Carla's moral dilemma is coming to a head, and we get one of these seamless transitions here, as Turk says, I hate her for doing this to me. I hate him for doing this to me. We immediately get a cutaway to Carla saying the exact same thing about changing her last name, as we understand these two characters are experiencing parallel emotions over two different things. When you see this next scene here with Dr. Cox and Ben for the first time, it seems like these two old friends are discomforting one another, as Dr. Cox is explaining that he feels responsibility to his patients. When we watch it a second time, we understand that this scene is one of the saddest scenes in maybe the entire series. Dr. Cox is wrought with grief over the death of his friend, and instead of coping in a healthy way, he is burying himself in his work. There's another great moment here where Elliot throws us off a bit. She turns around and appears to lock eyes with Ben, making this illusion a little more tangible. Oh, Ben, outstanding commitment. Thanks. As we transition ourselves away from the guilt and anger, the theme of acceptance begins to emerge as Dr. Cox forgives JD and Turk and Carla come to terms with each other's wants and needs in their relationship. And finally, one of the best things about Scrubs and what makes a perfect episode really work is the element of surprise. The show consistently keeps you on its feet, especially with plot reveals. The finale of this episode is what really cements it as being the pinnacle of what Scrubs can do. As we get to what we assume is Jack's birthday party, Dr. Cox is speaking with Ben and JD about taking photos of kids. Pictures of what? You know, crying babies covered in chocolate, people singing happy birthday to my son who have never even met him before, you know, the, the whole routine. And we finally get this great line from JD. Where do you think we are? Ben suddenly disappears, and it's revealed that we are at a cemetery for Ben's funeral, revealing that it was Ben who died and not Mr. Taylor. The music here fits perfectly with these slow camera moves, and it really highlights the emotional impact Ben's death has had on the character who is famously callous and cold. JD and Turk both comfort Dr. Cox during his time of grief, and we get this whole storyline coming full circle in a truly beautiful way. We get the signature JD voiceover and the credits roll over an emotionally vulnerable Dr. Cox. This episode touches on the complexities of interpersonal relationships while delving deep into what it means to love someone. It's not only a statement which attempts to dig up how humans care for one another, but also for how we experience grief and loss. And somehow through all of this, the episode's hilarious. It's hard to think of another show that can capture this level of emotional depth and nuanced character development in a single episode while still being, well, funny like a sitcom's supposed to be. Scrubs is truly one of a kind, and while there are many episodes of Scrubs that are great, I Screw Up is one of the only episodes that I think can be considered well, close to perfect. Well guys, that's it for today's episode of Nostalgic. If you enjoyed it, press the like button down below. As always, if you haven't yet done so, click subscribe. That just, you know, helps make sure you see all the videos. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one.